Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Oh, beautiful, bright faces on the morning of our second day together. What a privilege to have yet another day in this beautiful country with this amazingly loving family. Let me ask you a question. How many of you partied like rock stars last night? Oh my God! Now I have severe, I have a severe case of FOMO. Actually, no, the FOMO is being replaced with JOMO. You know JOMO? The joy of missing out, because I was in bed sleeping. How many of us were sleeping, had a good night, beautiful rest? Harbin and I did. <laughs> did you have an, a, a day of absolute revelations yesterday? Yeah? Did you make new friends? Yes, from different countries, different cultures, different languages. What a privilege. What a privilege it is to be here. And you know, really just, we can't say it over and over again, but Sasha, you and your team, your hospitality, your love, it's absolutely blowing our minds. Thank you. Thank you. That's a lot, that puts a lot of pressure on when they're going to visit our countries, right? It's just, the bar set so high. So with that, I want, to, I want all of us to bring our hearts and breaths in together as we dive so very deeply with our spirits to unravel yet another day at the Women Economic Forum in Slovenia 2020. Ladies and gentlemen in the room, we are a part of his, yes, thank you for your support. He's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Oh, and Petra's going second gentleman right here. <laughs> Thank you for being with us, brothers. Thank you. Let's take a moment, like we do, to bring our breaths in. Taking, let's sit with long spines, lifting the crown of our heads over. And relaxing everything. Uncross your legs, uncross your hands. Palms of your hands can rest gently on the knees. Just begin to close your eyes when you're ready. Just feel the connection of the ground supporting you, beneath you, holding you up. And just for a moment, imagine the roots reaching far beneath and beyond, like the roots of a banyan tree, spreading deeply. And in that root system, see how the roots of your tree are intertwined, interconnected with those around you. to the left and the right and behind you. The roots in togetherness growing stronger, like a big family of banyan trees, breathing into your roots. Taking a big breath in, from your roots up to the crown of your head as you exhale, release, anything that no longer serves you. The next in-breath, letting your heart expand and open into a space of intentions, into a space of newness, of nurturing, as you exhale, release. It was a beautiful full moon last night. It's a really, really important time for us to let go, surrender, and make way 
for the new. This breath that we take in now, we together will take an in-breath and exhale with the sound of ha with an open mouth. Inhale, let's together breathe in. <sighs> Feeling the connection. Slowly coming back to your body, coming back to the space. Open your eyes when you're ready in your own time. And look around you. I just want to say that this beautiful girl has been introducing everybody with so much love. I think someone needs to introduce her. You do, every time. <laughs> this beloved angel of mine and of ours is actually an amazing entrepreneur. She runs a bed and breakfast business in New Delhi, in the greater New Delhi region. So if any one of you are planning to visit that part of the world, please get in touch with her. Her property that she owns has eight beautiful, tastefully done rooms. Every time I step into them, I feel like I don't want to go back anywhere. I want to stay here. They're so beautiful. They reflect Mansi's spirit like a hundredfold. She has a lovely organic farm where she grows all the food. And then that gets served to you as I love her beetroot hummus recipe. Really love it. And she started helping us out with the forum and the, the emceeing, the presentations and everything. And um, we never let her go. <laughs> you know why now, right? And she does this as her offering of love. Oh, by the way, she's also, she's a woman of many, many talents. I just told you one. She also runs yoga retreats everywhere in India. Uh, so if you're planning to do Rishikesh or just have a yoga meditation retreat, Please uh, know Mansi is, is the best in, in what she does. And she is also now a, a, a budding stylist, I think, because she helps me with my dresses every morning, uh, you know, how to, like, what earrings to put and how to do my hair and stuff. So, well done. <laughs> Thank you. Another hat. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you for what you do and who you are. Bless you. Thank you. I love you. We love you all. <laughs> Welcome to a very magical day, day two. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready to step beyond and over your boundaries? Are you ready? Yes? Are we going to do this together? Yes. yes. Is Slovenia ready? Oh, wow. Okay. Can we have a raise of hands just for the Slovenians in here? We love you. We love you guys. Really, you're just absolutely the most abundant gifts of nature. Thank you for all of you. And with that, we're going to invite our speakers for this session to begin our day with a bang. We are talking about living authentically. Living your unique self, when you do that, it's like adding value to not just you, but also your business, everything that you're concerned with in your life. So please join me in welcoming our speakers for this session, who have been very kindly waiting for us to finish our parties of last night. <laughs> Please put your hands together as we welcome Nikki Marshall. Coming from the UK, Nikki is a lady who has seen many an odds, but she's an expert in swimming upstream. She's the one who bounces back and teaches us and you to bounce back. The founder and director of Discover Your Bounce, Nikki Marshall.
welcoming Monica Rodriguez. Also from the UK, she is an international best-selling author, speaker, and women's leadership mentor. Welcoming Galia Orme. I was reading her bio earlier and it said when she was looking at reinventing her life, she was deciding between whether to be a rock chick or a chalk chick. So she went with chalk chick. And you'll ask, what is that? This lady sources ethically and sustainably uh, sustainable cacao products from South America, Peru, um, Ecuador. Ecuador, and brings them to the world. Welcoming you, Chuck Chick, <laughs> UK. <laughs> if we have with us Megan Fallone, <laughs> a privilege to welcome this beacon of light for women worldwide, the CEO of Barefoot College International, working in India in the far reaches of India and the rural villages, bringing light, bringing education, and turning the women who have access to literally nothing into solar engineers who are lighting up their worlds and our worlds. It's a privilege to have you join us yet again, Megan. We're talking about living authentically. We've, we've had this conversation multiple times yesterday. It's time to bring it home. I'd like to begin, I'd like to invite Nikki Marshall to bring her unique perspective with us this morning, sharing her journey. Welcoming you, Nikki. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, this morning. Um, I'd like to uh, thank Dr. Harbin for inviting me once again, and it's lovely to reconnect with Mansi. I spoke in India three years ago. Um, and to the ladies that were polkering at half past one this morning with me, I salute you for being here this morning, and I hope you've enjoyed the coffee. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this morning is about... Uh, living your authentic self and how that helps in business. And as Mansi said, I have had several journeys of, of bouncing back. And um, one of the journeys I shared, I've written some books over the years, but as Sharon said yesterday, we're publishing this, uh, The Bounce Back Journey. And uh, we found out yesterday that it's actually gone to a bestseller on Kindle yesterday. Sharon shared that with me in our session. Which is just fantastic. But one of my chapters, the chapter I wrote, the first chapter I wrote is called Failing to Succeed. And actually I realized that I started being an entrepreneur 14 years ago. And my nickname was The Puppy. So the bouncy thing was a theme even then, but I used to get so enthusiastic about everything. And someone would say, you know, yeah, let's open this, you know, let's open this holistic therapy center. I go, yeah, let's do it, it'd be amazing. And I'd start running around 100 miles an hour. Um, and then I'd realized that my commute to work was three hours every day. And I would be doing that seven days a week. And very quickly, I would run out of steam. Uh, I have had business partners who haven't supported me in what I did. I had a business partner that ended up financially taking quite a lot out of the business that I didn't know about. And as an ex-accountant, I should have known right. But, you know, <laughs> we, we learn. We get so enthusiastic that sometimes we get a bit blinded to things. Uh, I've also worked long hours and, and uh, my one of my biggest values is my family, my husband, my children, and I've got grandchildren. It's a big part of what I do. Love supporting my parents and hanging out with my mum. Uh, but a lot of the businesses that I took part in just didn't actually give me time to do that. And then you end up feeling guilty, right? Because if you're at work, you should be at home. And if you're at home, you should be at work. And, and that can be a really exhausting little uh, roundabout to play. And then my 
business in 2010, I really wanted to help people because making a difference to people, helping people with their energy, their vision is really a big part of what I do and what I love to do. Uh, but I forgot the me first thing. When you are trying to give your energy to other people, you need to actually make sure you've got that energy yourself or your energy is being topped up. So I started a holistic therapy business as well as a coffee shop because I thought, well, people drink coffee, they relax, they chill, then they might want a therapy or, you know, to learn massage or do these things. So I set up a holistic coffee shop and no one had done it and there was probably a reason for that, but, you know... <laughs> I learned the hard way. Um, so I jumped right in again, this puppy. I, we opened, we had firemen at our opening party. It was all very exciting. Uh, and I started, you know, getting this vision of this business. But the next morning, I remember opening the door. Everyone else had gone home. We, I'd been staying there till whatever time washing up. So I'm kind of used to a late night. And um, I opened the door the next morning and thought, oh, I've got to make this work now. I've had all this vision, all this excitement. And now actually I've got to do the hard work. So we've only got a, a short time this morning. I was working 80 to 90 hours a week, drinking coffee, eating not very much, and, and just in this, this roller coaster of, I have to do this. Um, three months later, we went for a, a routine uh, scuba dive to relax, uh, and I ended up having a muscular, skeletal, and cerebral bend, which the cerebral bend caused a stroke. So I'd just turned 40, I had this brand new business, I had four grown up teenagers who needed a lot of my attention, uh, I couldn't use this arm at all, couldn't really feel this leg, it was, could stand on it but not really know that I had this leg, so I couldn't drive my car, um, and I had to really stop and take a hard look at the person that made all that happen, and, and that person was me. And I got very cross and very angry at myself, but then the pain just got worse and worse and worse. And in the end, I had to, to forgive myself and say, that's okay. It, it happened. I can't undo it. And I started on a journey of looking after myself. And making a difference started with making a difference to me. So roll forward three years. I made a complete recovery. I was able to dive again. And now my left-hand side, when I go to the gym, I hired a personal train, uh, ex-Marine personal trainer to help me with my recovery. Never do that. Just... Never do that. It's ridiculous. Honestly, the things we would do, 6 a.m. on a football pitch, just no, don't, don't do that. There are easier ways. Um, but I am now very strong. Uh, I have found a wonderful business partner who is sneaking up with her camera. It's red. She hasn't got red shoes on, but the phone is red. <laughs> Uh, I have a business partner who supports me in everything I do and actually pushes me forward. She rings me up. She says, um, I've told everyone you're amazing. You're doing this speaking gig for the Chartered Institute of Personnel Development. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so off I go. Um, but also my family time gets put in my diary first. My uh, time with my friends goes first. Uh, I was at the birth of my granddaughter in September this uh, last year and that was first, and when I needed to be there before some extra hospital appointments, Sharon said, just go. She lives in Ireland. Just get on a plane, just go. Off you go. I'll see you later. So that's meant we've been able to set up three really amazing companies. So we mentor people on their vision and their energy and make sure CEOs, company directors don't get overwhelmed with all the plates that they're spinning and they actually look after themselves. We go into corporations and talk about stress physical health, mental health, how to get some sleep, which is massive, I can assure you, after last night. Um, and we really say, you know, how can we do this better? And over two years, we've uh, helped 2,000 employees with their, their physical health and their mental health. Um, we are publishing company. We get people to share their stories. So it's not just my story in this book. There's myself, there's Sharon, there's our mothers, there's my daughters, but there's people who've never been an author before, and we've allowed them to become an, a bestseller on Amazon, which is... For them, a really big journey. Um, and then the end of last year, we had uh, a member of our family had a suicide attempt, and we realized that men's mental health in the UK is actually a massive struggle. And in construction, a man in construction is three times more likely to take his own life than someone in another industry. So we set up, we call it our social passion project, it's our social enterprise. And so we go into construction companies, and we're just starting to go into sports uh, clubs a little bit, um, but to talk to the men and go, okay, what makes you stressed and how can we stop that? And rather than saying, man up, you know, what's the matter with you? You can actually say, would you like a coffee? How can I help? Uh, and so the book, the proceeds of this book is funding that social passion project. 
And so we will then be able to go into more businesses, more construction sites. And we already know that we've saved a life. We already know that I did a talk one morning and, and we were able to give this guy the signposting he needed. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> and the family member we were talking about, he's, he's still here and he's doing well too, which is amazing to be able to do that. So I would just say to you, you know, sometimes people say that putting yourself first is, is selfish. You know, well, that's really selfish. You know, yes, there are people that need your help and there are people that will be guided by what you do. But actually, if you make sure that you are the most vibrant, best version of yourself. Every morning I get up and I say, how can I be a better version of myself than I was yesterday? And that might just mean having a little sleep on the way home on the plane, or it might mean actually taking some time for me. But I encourage you all to put yourself first, because then the difference that you can make will be amazing. And I imagine a world without mental health issues where no one's alone. And uh, I would encourage you all to just be there for yourself and then be there for the people around you. So thank you very much. What an inspirational story, Nikki. I wanted to hear it firsthand. That really was something. But that's what they say, right? That the hardest times in our life lead to some of the greatest moments, lead to the reorganization, reclamation of our world and our lives. You're a roaring example of that. Welcoming our next speaker, Monica Rodriguez, Women's Leadership Mentor, Moni Rodriguez International. It's a privilege. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, I'm deeply honored to be here today. Um, this is my third Women's Economic Forum, so I'm very honored and especially in this beautiful country of Slovenia. I've been willing to come here for a long time and it's the right opportunity and it's, it's been amazing, it's so romantic and it's, it's truly a place I would like to come back in, in summer. Um, so my name is Monica and uh, apart from being a, a writer, speaker and a women's leadership mentor, I also call myself the Joy Alchemist. And the reason behind this name is because alchemy is the art of transforming base metal into gold. As human beings, I believe that we all have the inner power to live from the place of our true essence, which is the place of the soul. And when we start living from that place, we cannot help uh, but to feel deep joy and unconditional love, and we become gold. So that transformation in alchemy is also possible at the human level. Um, I believe uh, that each single one of us have a unique uh, soul essence, and the purpose of life really is, uh, we come to this earth, is my belief, to really remember who we truly are at the core of our being, and live from that place. So uh, when we live from the place of the soul, uh, we start uh, living a fulfilled life. We give permission to ourselves to follow our joy and to express our unique gift to the world. So imagine for a moment if we all forgot all the stories that we were sold when we were growing up, for example, of not being good enough to follow our passions of being an artist or not being good enough to perform dancing or anything that we believed to be true when we were growing up. Or things like that you really need to work very, very, very hard to create abundance in our world. So what if, by remembering our true soul lessons and going back to a place of authenticity, we start believing that we are just perfect as we are? <clears throat> we, 
we start believing that we don't need to do more. And we just need to start doing more of the things that really brings joy. So I believe that we can create amazing new projects, solve world problems, and create profitable businesses by doing, by doing something that we really love. So um, how can we start living from an authentic place and allow joy to be our compass? So I would like to give you today three practical steps that really helped me in my journey of allowing my authentic self to guide my uh, life and also to express it through my life experience, including my business. So the number one is to give permission to yourself to stop repressing and start expressing. So express more of what you, makes your soul dance. Um, go back to the things that make your heart sing of joy and passion. Um, the number two is uh, believe a different story about yourself. Forget about all the memories and stories that you told yourself about what you cannot do and start believing in the power of your unlimited potential. Ask your higher self, what did I uh, come here for? Where in my life do I want to express more of who I truly am? And the number three, which I love, <laughs> it's um, love yourself unconditionally. And you might ask, because I get a lot of my women asking, but how do you actually love yourself unconditionally? How do you do that? It's very easy to say it, but how do you do it? So my answer is that you just need to accept yourself unconditionally and respect yourself deeply. Start priori prioritizing your dreams and align your life to your core values. So when we express uh, ourselves without limits and we love ourselves without limits, we are completely free to create a new story for ourselves, for our business. And our business becomes uh, an extension of our soul. So there is no doubt that doing something that you truly love will bring you joy, freedom, and much more abundance to your life. So I wish you a safe journey back home to your soul <laughs> and a very prosperous future. Thank you so much. Thank you for your wishes to our journey, a safe landing back to home. But um, like Rumi said, and what you said reminded me of what he says, let the beauty of what you love be what you do. So simple and so profound. And if we can really implement even 1% of that wisdom, I think it's, it would be a revolution for our own lives. Yes, a revolution of joy, absolutely, always. <laughs> Thank you, Monica. Welcoming an award-winning entrepreneur, founder and CEO of Chuck Chick. Over to Galia Ornme. Is it on? It's on. Good. <laughs> Thank you so much. I am genuinely so honored to be here. Um, I've never been to Ljubljana before and I love it. I have to come back. So thank you all for your hospitality. It was phenomenal, really. <laughs> Incredible. So yes, I'm Galia and uh, I'm a chocoholic. I love chocolate. Um, but I'm also a mother. I'm also, I was a student. I was a wife. I was a daughter. And the whole concept of who am I, what is my authentic self, I think that's something I've only discovered, you know, in a few years ago. I don't think even the term living an authentic life, being your authentic self, 
existed, certainly when I was younger. Um, and so for me, I, I was really wondering, what, what does it mean? And, and I feel like everything that has happened to me in my life and my, uh, and, uh, my experiences has led me to what I'm doing now, and I'm doing what I love, chocolate. But um, I, uh, I'm originally from Argentina. I was born in Argentina, and then my family moved to Canada, and then we moved to Israel. And then I came to the UK when I was 22. Then I went back to Israel. And then I lived in the States. So I am kind of fit everywhere and nowhere. So for someone who's lived in so many different countries and has had to always adapt to the norms or the other people's expectations, I never really knew who I was until my 40s. So I think my 20s, I went and I studied law because that's what my parents wanted me to do. I hated working in law. I loved studying it, but I really didn't enjoy working it. I did a little bit of investment banking. That wasn't for me. I tried lots of different careers. I worked in high tech, um, and I loved it. But every time I had my two daughters, wonderful daughters, um, every time I had my children, they were a priority for me. So it was never about me, about who am I, who I am. And I don't think I even knew who I was until I was 40. And in my 40s, I had a real transformation. Um, I um, gave myself permission and the time to, to be me and do what I love. So I created a company. I left, I left the job without even thinking what I was going to do, a well-paid, secure job. And I thought, what do I love? I love chocolate. I love music. I used to sing in some bands, but... Um, I'm a rock chick, yeah, <laughs> rock on. But um, I actually sang in front of 10,000 people at the Zaydeen Rock Festival in Granada. So I'm like, loved it. I've reached, but, um, which was amazing. But there's no money in being a <laughs> rock chick. But uh, I, um, I knew that I always loved chocolate. Chocolate's been part of my life. My mother made chocolate when I was a child. I never thought I would make it. I've always said the story, unlike Chocolat, the movie, which I love, making chocolate is difficult. It's not that romantic. Ta-da! I'll make this chocolate for you. It's really difficult. So I never thought I would make chocolate, but I, I left my job and I thought, I, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to do something. And that week I discovered raw chocolate making. It blew me away. It's cacao. It's the pure ingredients. It's everything I didn't realize chocolate could be, lower in sugar, high in magnesium. It's so much healthier. But I wanted to do things differently. I worked in a corporate world, which was very masculine before. So, and I myself was quite masculine. So I wanted to bring out who I was. And I had some very strong core values. I had worked in human rights as well. I worked in, um, I did my master's in international criminal law. So I worked with trafficked women. I knew about exploitation of women, of children, of men in the supply chain. So for me, one of my main core values was compassion and non-exploitation in the supply chain. But I'm a small business. How do I do this? And I just thought, I'm just going to go out there. I went, I contacted the Ecuadorian embassy. I contacted the Peruvian embassy. And I said, I want to visit cocoa plantations. I, I want to know where my products come from. So I went out. I, I speak Spanish, so I was lucky I could speak to the people. But for me, the connection with the supply chain is a core value as well. It's really important. That, and that's what I love and what I believe in. So this is what I put into my business. And um, I've never compromised. We've always uh, bought directly. I've met the farmers I work with. Um, I travel regularly to Ecuador. I've created products in Ecuador with cocoa uh, and chocolate factories. And we work collaboratively. We work as a team. So if I do well, they do well. So for me, it was really important to have um, a brand and a, a product and products that um, were important to me was something that I would buy and that I care about. So my business has actually taught me who I am. Um, all the things that I've learned along the way, I've been able to implement in my business. And the more I do what I love doing and the more I feel connected to the suppliers, to the cacao, to my, um, my customers, I love doing sampling. I'm always sampling. Uh, I love meeting people. I want to know what they think. And that's kind of brought to me what, who I am and what my business is. So living authentically has been living authentically through my business. Everything about the business has been a reflection of me and has also been an enhancement of me. I feel like I've grown so much uh, thanks to chocolate. Um, so uh, 
you know, this is um, incredible to be here. You know, I would never have imagined that starting a business from my passion would lead me to so many incredible experiences. Being here, I've met so many amazing people along the way, and that's also one of my passions is people. I love meeting people. I want to hear their stories. I'm interested. So my business has enabled me to grow in so many ways and express myself and discover who I truly am. So... Um, Thank you for inviting me as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Agalia, for sharing such a beautiful story. I think chocolate is very symbolic of what women, what women have the effect of in the world, right? Because a little bit of sweetness can overtake a whole lot of bitterness. And I think chocolate's very symbolic of that. Because all we need is, a, is love and chocolate. We need you. <laughs> it's a pleasure to hear the journey once again from a very special woman who's traveled from a long way away to be with us this morning. We know she's changing lives. We know she's reorganizing the way we're going to look at the future. She's demystifying ownership at the grassroots. But maybe you don't know, she is also a world-class mountaineer. She's a designer. She's a sought-after entrepreneur. So this is a lady who wears many a hats. I hand you over to Megan Falone. Thank you. Thank you, ladies, for sharing all those beautiful and vulnerable experiences, thoughts, and journeys. Um, I loved listening to that, so thank you. And yesterday, you all heard me talk about why I do what I do and why I bring to the work that I do uh, so much of myself. So today, I thought, because this is the Women's Economic Forum, and this is a topic of authenticity, I'm going to do something completely different. I have nothing prepared, and I'm just going to share some thoughts with you. In the 12th century, there was a king, and he was presented a very beautiful game of chess by a young artisan. He was so taken with the gift that he asked the artisan, what can I do in return for this beautiful gift? The artisan says to him, well, actually, you could play a game of chess with me with the following rules. For every move you make on the chessboard, you will give me one grain of rice, and on the next one, two, and on the next one, four, and on the next one, eight, and so on, and so on. They arrived to halfway through the chessboard, and the king realized he had been greatly taken advantage of. The rice that he owed the artisan filled his castle, and they were not yet on the second half of the chessboard. Now, why is this story important? For me, it's really a indication of where we're at in the world today. Technology is moving us in these exponential steps ahead. Our thinking must move also equally in exponential ways now ahead. And that means our ability to connect as human beings, to define our leadership style in that kind of environment must dramatically change as well. So in thinking about authenticity and thinking about how do we continue to bring so much of ourselves, which is the reason we are successful, but to do it at an exponential rate. So here's my secret. My secret has been to adopt in the last 10 years a mindset of learning, unlearning, and relearning. It's been to wake up every, thanks. It's been to wake up every single day and to say to myself, something in the world has changed. What do I need to learn from that? How am I going to approach that? And how am I going to translate my unique self into that point of view? It's meant that my leadership style has become one of being a constant student of my businesses, of my social enterprise, of my humanity because I must be prepared to accept every day that I do not know what I need to know and that I need to learn those things from absolutely everybody around me. So my team often get very frustrated with me. They say, why don't you tell us what you think? 
And I am much less eager than I was at 20 to tell people what I think now, because I'm pretty sure I don't have the right answer. And my job, it seems to me, in this new landscape of exponential learning and exponential change and exponential amount of roadblocks and challenges that the world, that the climate, that human beings are throwing at us day on day has got to be one of being a conductor of great ideas, but other people's ideas, other people's wisdom. That's a kind of scary thing when you start giving up all your ideas of control, leaving the ideas we've been taught about being a leader and being the boss at the door and actually accept that you are there to serve. That's a very different mindset. It's one of serving your business, serving your customer, serving your beneficiaries, and that takes a huge amount of humility. I have had to admit in the last few years a whole range of biases I didn't know I had. One of them being that you needed a formal education to be able to really contribute in a meaningful way in the space of technology. It seems to me that Gandhi had it pretty much right when he said, our thoughts become our actions, our actions become our beliefs, our beliefs become our values, and our values become our destiny. Our ability to bring what is uniquely feminine to a largely male-dominated context in almost every instance has got to be the challenge for the next decade. Because our voices, our instincts, and our ability to consequentially think in the most positive of ways for our communities, our families, and the people that our businesses and organizations touch is going to be the measure of success. Thank you. Every word you said, I was, I was hanging on to. So were all of us. You are compelling with your thoughts and your speech. You've moved us. Thank you, Megan. Thank you for your presence. I don't know what else to say. I was saying that we were going to bring it home in this session. You brought it home. Thank you. <laughs> Megan Cologne. Deep gratitude to each one of you for bringing your perspectives, your dynamic, unique stories to share with all of us this morning. We thank you. Please come together for a group photograph.